Hi, this is Art Innovators. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be drawing a picture, as you can see here. It's a little bit of an Eastern style theme on a mountain. We're going to be using a, a water-based ink. These are flare pens, actually. Uh, it's a pen, a typical black pen. You can tell they're usually the ones with a little white cross at the top. And because it's water-based, we're going to be painting with it as if it was ink. Uh, before we actually get started on our painting, let's talk about a couple little things uh, that we like to have as uh, ground rules. Uh, make sure you're in a place that's nice and quiet and relaxed. Music is fine, but you do want to be able to make sure that you don't have an interruption. Uh, please make sure that you feel comfortable just trying to lines uh, any way you like. You don't have to do it exactly like this. And if you do try to make a line and you make a mistake, that's okay. As you can see here, the paint or ink blow, uh, blends and flows all together. And you can really take any line that you originally tried to uh, make in a certain way and bend and curve it into the contour of another, or it could become something totally new. You could have a line here that you didn't mean to make, and it could just become another mountain or part of a cloud. Anything like that is totally fine. So let's not uh, try to be too perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. And uh, please have a good time with it. This picture is neat as the way it is, but your idea of your picture can be much, much more intricate and meaningful to you. So try to put your own things in the picture, have fun, and if you do feel frustrated, try something different, try to see what else you could make rather than that original idea, and maybe you'll be even happier with that. Uh, this project is going to be uh, targeted to a slightly more, uh, older audience, so uh, any one who wants to try that's younger is welcome to do so. We do ask though that parents with younger children uh, allow them to try and make their own mistakes. Uh, if you know they do again make a line that they didn't mean to make, that's okay, it's gonna come out the way that they want to, but what's important is that they get the experience trying. Uh, this is really a learning experience. What you make on your own after that will be all the better for each thing you learn and uh, some uh, unexpected things along the way are a great part of that process. So let's start with a warm up. Uh, I'm going to give everyone a moment to get their supplies together. We can get um, flare pens, again, <laughs> they're the ones that are going to be the ones with the white plus shaped mark on the top. Other than that, you might want to just actually check and put some water on the ink and make sure it flows. I'm going to use a round tip brush. You can use a flat or a round tip, but the flat, uh, flat tip might be a little harder to get some of these little details. So say we're using a round tip brush, this is about a number eight, but any sizes, this is a seven, sorry, you, uh, any size that you want is fine and uh, watercolor paper. Uh, this is just a thicker paper that we can get wet. So I'll give everyone a moment to get their supplies together and I'll see you for a warm up. Thank you. Okay, we're back. We have all our supplies together. So let's do a quick warm up. We're not gonna be drawing any mountains just yet. Let's actually look and see what it looks like to feel uh, out of this flare pen. Any type of new material, it's nice to get a sense of. Let's start by drawing some basic shapes. So I'm going to draw a square. And we can have a circle. We can make a triangle. And let's have a little fun with the last one. Uh, let's try to draw something that we actually know as a character. So if we draw something like a stick figure person, right? Just a very simple stick figure person. Just so we understand what it's like when we use the flare pen. So here it is. We're gonna start with some very basic shapes. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take my brush. I'm going to get it wet. Just a little bit of water. And when we apply the water, we're gonna see, we're gonna to try to pull towards wherever you want the ink. So if you want the ink to be on the outside of the box, you can pull out. I'm gonna put it on the end, so I'm gonna pull inwards, and we can see right away that the ink is just coming off and flowing with the brush. Of course, if this is an important work document of yours, you're not gonna be very happy when you get water on it, but for our purposes, we can do some really cool art with it. Now, one thing to note when you're trying this, as the ink gets wet, it very much flows around and it's easy to work with. But once it dries, it locks in pretty well. So that means you do get to brush your ink around, but once it's dry, it's, it's staying there. So kind of shape it the way you want while it's still wet. Have some fun with those patterns. Add more water as you need. If you pull upwards, remember you will be working against gravity if you use a bunch of water. So the ink will be wanting to flow downwards. 
but I'm going to try and make a, a neat little spiral shape here. Anything that you want to do for your warm-up doesn't really make a difference. Just make sure that you feel confident in how it feels brushing this tank. So here we have a fun little swirl pattern. Uh, and here maybe I'll make it kind of like a beach ball shape appearance. Try and draw kind of like a triangle. Here we have a little triangle shaped wedge. Just grab more water as you need. And again, make sure you accommodate for gravity when you're painting upwards. We're starting to see we can make some neat and interesting shapes. Figuring out how to use these things as part of the creative process because who knows what a circle is going to become. It can become all sorts of fun things. If you put these uh, waves of ink on the outside, maybe it would look like something like a sun giving a phrase. Triangle. A triangle, I'm actually just going to see if I create a gradient where the top is dark and the bottom is light. doing that it should be kind of careful not to touch the sides as I'm going down too much because I'll pull out a lot more ink so I don't want to hit the sides too much. There we go. And for our person. For a person there's actually not all that much we can easily do with them. The idea behind drawing this as a warm-up is that this person is going to melt when we put this on here. So unless we want to draw a melty zombie, drawing these kind of specific lines is very very hard to work with. So the point of this little exercise is just to understand that we're not trying to draw the specific thing as in line art. We're just giving ourselves ink to work with because once we start painting it, the painting will really take on the form that we want the thing to be, not the lines we initially draw. Sorry, melty person. Okay. So, we have our shapes here. Uh, you can continue on and work up with them as much as you like. Try to feel confident though in whatever you're brushing so that you can feel that when you're actually working on your painting that you know where the ink is going to uh, land. Uh, so again, if I take this picture up here now, it's a little bit dry, and I paint over it, you can see the water now does not really move that ink. Once you've used it once and it locks into place, it is quite stuck. So for your work documents, if you spilled your coffee on them, you don't need to worry about spilling it twice because the first time we'll lock it in place. Um, but for our picture, it's, it's a little more reassuring uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how we can use that to our advantage with layering things uh, a little bit later. But you're free to use that now as well if you want to try putting more ink on top and layering it and then turning that ink into a line as well, you're welcome to do so. Other than that, we'll get back to you in a couple minutes. Take your time, uh, feel comfortable with that process and see what you can make. See you in a minute. All right, welcome back. So now we have our canvas set up. This is again, just watercolor paper. I've taped it down completely this time because as we use more water, uh, the canvas can kind of bend a little bit. So putting tape on the outside will help keep it straight. If your canvas is a little warped, no worries at all. Wait for it to dry. Just put it under some books, nice and clean books uh, when, it's, when it's dry and it'll flatten it out. But uh, it will help for making sure that the water doesn't slide around to keep it flattened while we're working on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this mountain and we can put in anything that you want. I'm going to start by drawing the mountain and then add some of these same details here to give it this eastern theme. But if you want to add anything else, if you want to make it a volcano, if you want to add multiple mountains, if you want a little island in the background, sky, think about the size of your mountain in terms of how big these houses are. It could be gigantic, it could be rather tiny, um, all these different factors. You could have a cliff on the side of your mountain, so feel free to be very creative and make it however that you like. To draw it, what I'm going to do is start at the top here. I'm going to draw this line just to kind of determine how big my mountain is and where it fills up space on the page. Uh, I'm going to come about two-thirds over. So if I think of my page in thirds, I'm going to come about two-thirds over and start towards the top 
and using my pen, I'm just going to draw this line here to a little or past halfway down the page. Okay. The actual curvature of the side of the mountain doesn't matter, so we can always add little bumps and chips and rocks later. Now, at the top here, we're going to add these other little bumps. I'm just going to add a little curve line for the bump here. Let's do the same thing beside it, another little bump. And let's add one more little one, but this time, I'm going to come down instead of stopping. I'm going to come down, 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 about a third of the way down my mountain. Let's do the same thing now. Another line that comes off and comes down even further. And these lines, they're not straight, but they're not really curved. They're just flowing, kind of a natural line. You can even just kind of feel like it's like a Ouija board and let your hand, the weight of your hand, pull it down. Another one beside that. This one, I'm going to kind of make a more of an angle on the side. And then if there's room left on the side of your paper, wherever you'd like that to go on that. Okay, so now we have this overall shape of the side of our mountain. So the next thing we want to do is determine a little bit about this coast, this, these rocks that form along the edge here. So I'm going to leave a bit of a gap because there's a lot of little detail here and we don't want to get into all that detail. I'm going to basically just draw a little bit of a bump on the side where these trees are going to go just so I know that's a little area I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to start drawing these rocks. These rocks kind of make a, a curve that comes along the side here. But I don't actually draw the curve, I'm just thinking of them in the shape of a curve. So let's draw this first rock up here. And what this is, is a line that goes up and then hooks at the top, right? So we're just going to draw a line for this rock. That's going to hook at the top. That's this rock here. Then below it, there's another one. It's going to come up and again hook. So this one's going to start a little lower though, right? Now let's do another one. I'm going to change the shape up on this one. It's going to be a little taller or have a more of a steep incline and a rounded top. And then this one is going to come up again. Coming just right around the face of the mountain here. And if you want to stop a little lower, that's okay. For example, if I stop there, all I have to do now is bring this line down to meet it. And we're good. And then we're going to do this next rock here. This one's kind of funny. It looks like a nose to me, but whatever shape you want your mountain to be. And I have one more here. I'm going to make this one smaller in here because this one had a little more space. So I'll just put a little rock here for fun. Uh, here we have some little details in our rocks. We'll get back to that first. Uh, let's plan out our overall scene. So on this side here, I want a couple rocks just to kind of uh, sandwich in and create a nice composition for our town. So I'm going to draw this little rock in the front. Again, it's going to come right across. So here I'm going to think about where the bottom of this rock is here. And it's going to be coming right across to show that now we're straight and it's not a curved area anymore. It's that little rock and then above it we'll do a slightly bigger one. And we're going off the paper, it's totally fine. Alrighty, so now that we have our rocks, we can think about what else is going to be on the other side here. Here I have a little island with a little, like a rope bridge type of uh, effect. So to do that I want to plan where the bottom of this island is going to be. And I want that to be in line uh, with the top rock. So I'm going to come across here. And this is going to show us how far back something is. Because if I start up here, it's going to be much further in the background. So the height is going to show us how far back, sorry, the height on the page is going to show us how far back the island is. So I want the same height as this line here, but across. I'm going to make that little rock there. And now we can see that it's just as far back as this rock. And then we can draw our little rope bridge. This little curved line. Remember, this is going to be quite far away and small, so we don't want to draw it too big. But we'll just draw that and a little copycat line for it. And if you want now, you can draw some little lines across to show ropes or crossings. Any little detail that you want, but not too much, just to let ourselves know what this is all about. All right. 
So we have a basic shape of our mountain and our rocks. I'm gonna give you guys another moment to just put in any other rocks that you want down here. Uh, let's not do any details yet though. We're just going to take a moment to put in any last rocks or to get our, the edge of our mountain uh, filled out the way we like to use that paper. If you do have more space over here and you wanna draw a second mountain that goes up in this background, that's totally fine as well. But let's not put any detail yet and we'll get back to that step next. Okay, go ahead and we'll see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. What we're gonna do now is start to think about how we're gonna put details into our mountain. Uh, we're not gonna do the super fine details, but we are gonna start planning out how we want our mountain to look. So let's think about this background here and where our mountain is. This mountain is in the water. Now here, I had it fade out. Maybe it's foggy or misty and you can't see where the horizon line is, where the water and sky meet, but my mountain is in the water. Uh, so I do want to have some water down here, which means that the water will eventually end. So if you want to draw a horizon line in, you can certainly do that and kind of think about where that would be. I'm going to put one in right about here on this picture. That's going to be right around the center. You can put in your horizon line wherever you want if you'd like one. If not, and you want to just kind of fade out in the background, that's fine too. And then let's make some little dashes for the water. Now for water, uh, when we think of a cup, the top of the cup is going to be a circle, but as it moves, more and more vertically, we're not going to see that full circle. So here I have an actual cup of water. Again, we know this is a circle on the top, but if I'm holding it like this, you're not seeing a circle, right? You're only seeing this little bit of the shape of the top of the circle that looks kind of like a sliver. The same is gonna happen here when you drop something into the water and it creates a ripple effect. We're going to have that ripple. So to show the edges of these rocks rippling in the water, we're actually gonna draw something that looks like a little letter C for our ripple effect. And I know that's very small, but I'm gonna draw it here even larger. You don't need to put this on your picture, this is just a demonstration. If I have a finger going into the water here, it'll be dipped into the water. I'm gonna have these hooks, this circle around here. This is the way the water is going to form around the finger, right? When we see the pattern of the waves coming out, so we don't want to draw a circle like this, because that would mean looking straight down at it. So here I'm drawing much smaller, but the same idea here, we're drawing these little half circles at the edges here, and that's going to create those fun little ripples. If you do want to add something like I have in this picture, like another rock, you're welcome to do that as well. You can add some ripples around those as well, because they will change the way the water flows. And we can just add some of those little rippling effects all around, and that will show not only where the bottom of the rock is, but also how the water interacts with it. We don't want too many though. This is going to just all blend in with the ink and water once we actually put it down on the page. This will help show our uh, coastline here. It's a very jagged coastline. Probably not too many boats there. Okay. Now on this version of the picture, you can see that we have clouds. The clouds I've actually drawn in the exact same way as the water. Uh, here I don't have water, here I do, but you can see this the same shape, just much larger. So if you did want to put in something like clouds, we'll do them the same way as the water, for the same reason. We're just gonna make these little circles like this. And this can give us those neat cloud effects. Same shape though. Okay. And now we're having this cool, very dramatic sort of scene now where the clouds are kind of circling around our mountain. And let's also put a couple details in the mountain itself. So here we can see all these cracks and crags in our mountain. We do want room on the bottom, but let's think about the shape of this mountain so we know where our houses are going to go. Uh, if I have this line here, then that means this section between these two rocks, sorry, these two lines of rocks, this section of the mountain probably comes outward, so we know it's closer. This section here might go inwards. So depending on the face of our mountain, we can kind of plan our uh, decorations around it. So I'm gonna make a little line here, just a little curved line there. Doesn't really matter the size or shape, but I'm gonna make a little one just to show something. 
And then this larger line here that's a bit of a diagonal. I'm going to come from around the edge of this mountain up here, a little bit lower down. And so I make a little cross line here. And that's how I made that second line. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I do want room to put in my decorations, but this is gonna just show us the contour and the shape of that mountain. And I'm gonna put in another line now here going sideways. Just again, adding some cracks. Yours do not have to be in the same pattern. If they're a different pattern, that's fine. It's just gonna mean your mountain has a slightly different shape. And let's add some funny lines up at the top, just to give it a little bit of uh, character. Now my mountain's very, very smooth on the side, so maybe I wanna add a little bit of crag and something a little sharper. If you want your mountain to be smooth or sharp, weathered or uh, very freshly cracked off, could be a lot of interesting differentiation there. So now we have our horizon line, we see where our water is, uh, and we see where our mountain is shaped and any clouds. So now we have our picture and we can really see how it all shapes together. Uh, if you want to add anything else before we get to into our fine details, now is a great time. I'm going to give everyone some time to do that. Uh, if you do add anything, uh, remember that the marker is going to be the darkest part. So if you want to add something like a sun, try not to add a very dark circle for a sun because that means the sun is going to be the darkest area. You'd want the ink to be around it. So if you did want to add something like that, you could add, for example, a sun. Uh, let's use this circle here and say it's our sun. You could add some little lines around it like this. Again, we want to go sideways because that is going to show that nice open sky effect. And then when we paint that, you can turn that into the ink and leave the sun itself as light. So that's just a, a note, not on, that you should draw sun, but to note that this is always going to be the darkest part of your picture. Okay, so go ahead and we'll meet back up in just a second. Okay, we're back and I hope everyone's very happy with their pictures. Uh, we're going to continue by starting with this really fine detail and really putting in all these interesting accents to show where our mountain is. Uh, I'm going to start down towards this bottom area here. Uh, we have this interesting uh, bridge. So I'm going to make a little straight line that's going to go across where these two rocks are. Just straight across. And one thing to note, this is the first thing we've done that's man-made. So far, all this is more natural, maybe the bridge not, but more of this is very natural. So we're having these, these flowing, uh, irregular lines. Now I want a nice straight line because the person who made this was a very responsible engineer and didn't mess around. So they made a nice straight line for their, uh, I, I believe this is a aqueduct or tunnel. Uh, and now we're gonna do on top of that another line. Uh, we're gonna do for the top. So this part is gonna come right straight across towards the top of uh, this rock. Um, and we're gonna give ourselves a good amount of room to put in some detail between. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go from here straight across there. Okay. And now we're gonna make one more straight line for the top of this uh, bridge or tunnel area. And this one isn't actually going to touch anything on the side. It's just gonna show where the ground is. Uh, again, it's gonna connect over to this rock here. In fact, I'll start from this side just to make sure. Okay. And now I'm gonna add a couple more straight lines just to show these little uh, steps or stairs. And they're gonna get larger as they go down. There we are. And then here we have this archway. That's just going to be a curve. Just like a rainbow shape, a letter N. Now here I do have it filled in. I'm going to wait on that because when we're actually coloring, we don't want to fill in lots of things with dark ink yet because if we touch it with the brush while we're painting, uh, it'll just go everywhere. So let's leave the parts that we want solid black for a bit later. Um, okay, so on top we have this building. For the building, I again want to start with a straight line just for where my roof is going to be. So it's right around in the middle of that area. I'm going to make an, yet another straight line. And now I'm going to make some straight lines down for the uh, legs or pillars that support the building. I'm going to do that in four sets. 
So I'm going to do them every quarter of the picture there. And then if you want one set to be in the background of each, you can do that as well by just giving it a little copycat right beside it. Okay. Now for the roof, we're going to make yet another straight line. This one is going to be smaller than the one below it because we're going to make some little triangles out of the sides. And now I'm going to bring this down and the side is going to go a little further out. And the side we're going to come here so we see that's a triangle. And then we're going to add yet another little straight line on the top. Right across just for a little decoration at the top. Here we're making that little decoration. And then a straight line down to touch either side. And then a little circle. And this is just to embody a little bit of that Eastern style of decoration. I'm gonna put some little uh, circles here on the top of my roof as well. But let's not put in too many details because it's gonna make it a lot tougher to paint later. You can always add in some details at the end as well. Okay, so now we have this general shape here. Uh, let's add some more uh, contour and a text in for the side of our mountain here. Let's gonna start by drawing this little house that's kind of hidden behind the mountain. That'll add a lot of character to it. I'm gonna start with a little straight line that goes sideways. Uh, I'm gonna go a little higher because I don't want the roof to match my horizon line. That'll look a little funny. So I'm gonna make my roof even higher, a little straight line here. And then a little curve down so we know where the roof is. That's just gonna be a little curve for that roof. And then we're gonna come straight back in and touch our mountain. And then we can make a line down, straight line down. And then we can have one more come in, the side of our mountain. And that's gonna be our little hut or house that's behind the mountain. It's hard to tell, it's quite far away. So you can make it into whatever you like. And now we're gonna start adding some trees along the side here. For the trees, they're gonna be very simple. All I'm going to do is draw a straight line down, then a little upside down V for a hat, I'm gonna draw large over here. Really just that shape, and then if you wanna add a little bit extra, you can add a couple more like that. But really that's all that we need because the paint is going to allow us to um, really show any definition that we need. So just a little, little bit of definition here. And then let's add some trees coming around the side here. So we know that it comes out. We can add a couple more that go even further. And now that we know where the side is, we can make these, this little staircase. Uh, we do want to kind of plan where we want this large building, maybe a, a pagoda style building. So let's put it, if we think of this pagoda being here, we will put that right on top of where this area is. We don't have to put the whole thing in detail, but let's draw a straight line to the side of this building here. And then another straight line beside it. This one's gonna not be quite as tall because of the perspective. It's gonna start a little lower down and also go lower down. So we can draw it into a uh, square. And then one more beside that, the same height. Good. Now let's connect these to make the actual side of our building. We're going to make a straight line. It's going to go across here. It's going to extend past that line. And then the same here, it's going to extend past that line. That way we can actually see that's the roof and it covers the whole building. And now we're going to curve up from these two sides. And now we're going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to make a line up here, the line that comes up here, and again we're going to curve up, and then these are just layers, you can add as many layers as you want, I did two, like this, and then I added one little extra story, and to do that 
all I did was add a straight line here, just like we did with these three. Then a straight line here, then a straight line here, three straight lines. And so just like we have on our base of our tower, we're having another layer. We can connect the lines that we have before here because right now there's an empty space. We can extend them and then connect the bottom. Just connect those lines. And now we have another story on our building. And now we can make the roof for that story just the way we did here with these lines here. We're gonna make a straight line that goes across. It's gonna extend past. Same thing on the other side. This is gonna be a straight line that goes past. Then a little curved line. A little curved line. My building just turned a little sideways, so that's okay. If I do worry that my building is shifting, I can just add a little decoration here on this other side to match it. There we go. And then to make the top, we'll add one more layer to our roof. And then I'll put a little triangle at the top. triangle there and then we can connect it and again my building was a little bit sideways here so I'm trying a little bit of an angle so I'll just touch that up it doesn't matter at all because it's all going to get lost in the black of the paint so don't worry about any extra lines or proportions they're going to be totally fine okay also let's give this a little platform to be rest on To do that, I'm going to start above the bottom of this line, of uh, the side of the line, sorry. I'm going to go up sideways. Then I'm going to come back in towards the left. And then straight. I'm going to connect these here, straight as well. And here, two little lines. So now we have a little platform for a building to be on. And last, as we said, we're going to make a little staircase. So for that, we're just going to make some little straight lines that are going to come out the side and around the bottom. Okay, so those are our buildings. Uh, here I did put in another one. If you want to put in more buildings, you're welcome to. You can put in as many buildings as you like. Uh, take your time with that. Uh, but we do just want to put in the basic geometry of it. So we're going to think about some squares and some long lines. So go ahead, take your time, uh, put in those buildings, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, we're back. So now we are going to start putting in all these last little fine details, these very little uh, bits, things like trees. So I'm going to start actually at the top. Uh, the top of the mountain is going to be a place that's generally pretty cold, so it might not have as many trees. But this mountain isn't that big, right? So it's hard, it's hard to tell. It can be up to your perspective. I'm going to put in some trees up there, uh, little ones at the top. Again, we're going to make a, this type of shape where I'm just going to make a little straight line and then a little hat. And I can do that anywhere I want for all these little trees. Just a little straight line and then a hat. So I just did a couple little arrows. Maybe it's just an upward arrow. And then if I think about these cracks in the mountain, if there is water and snow melting on the mountain, these cracks might be where water runs down. So maybe there's going to be more trees in that area. It depends a little bit about how you perceive what these cracks mean, but it's up to you. But it is nice to put your trees in little clusters because it's unlikely that they're going to draw, uh, be perfectly evenly patterned right over the mountain, right? So let's just put them in little clusters all over, wherever you like. They can overlap. That looks pretty good. And now here, by the side, I'm going to put in a bunch more trees in and around this area here. This is really going to show the path of that mountain coming down and around. And 
You can draw some big trees. They don't all have to be the same size. Some variety will look really nice. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's put some up and around the back of this tower here. So I'm using these trees to show how this path curves and where the boundaries of this, uh, these buildings are. If I want to put some trees at the top here, I can put some, some more down here. Again, as they're getting closer, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. And maybe not quite as big right at the water, because maybe the soil isn't as good. Up to you. And then the other thing I have as details is on the rock itself, I drew some of these little, um, same kind of cracks as on the mountain, but maybe a little smaller. So we can just draw some cracks and, and chips and tell a little bit about the life of these larger rocks. Probably we're at one part, part of this mountain. Maybe some over here too. And we can put in a wave or two if you want some larger waves in your water, if this is water in your picture. All right. And again, uh, there could still be further details. If you want to put in details and have them part of your painting, uh, you can put details in these buildings. So if I put in, um, for example, an archway or doorway here, I can paint with that. Um, and here maybe I'll put in a straight line down, and another straight line down inside, and I'll cross, just for some decoration. I'm not sure exactly what it'll be, but again, we're just kind of going with that theme of decoration. And then here on this building, maybe I'll have um, like shingles. So I'll start at the top. And then have them connect. With circles again i'm just drawing those circles like this shape and then one below like that so they're just connecting like this if you want your shingles to be very nice and defined you can put them in after doing some of the painting but if you want them to just all kind of blend in with the ink you can do it before like i'm doing here i'm putting all these little details now but we want to make sure our picture is all planned out before we do too much with detail so this is the time to do it. Uh, you can do it on this building, and if you want to add a couple on this side as well, you can do it on this building or whatever other place you'd like. Now this building, I'm not gonna put too many in because again, uh, it's a little bit sideways, so I'm gonna use the paint to um, correct that and make sure I even things out. Uh, but if you wanna put in details and you want them to become part of the paint, that's fine. So now I'm pretty happy with all that. What I'm gonna start to do is, I'm actually gonna add one or two more trees up here. Up to you though. What I'm going to do now is finally get to use the water and the brush. And things don't have to be 100% set because again, you can layer them. So I'm going to take the now paintbrush and some water. And I'm going to start towards the top where I have these trees. And when I paint, again, this paint is going to do, or the pigment is going to do something. So I'm going to try to think about these shapes and um, maybe crevices of this mountain that the paint is going to go into. I'm gonna kind of make up my own texture and contour of this mountain. So here I have two uh, lines kind of meeting, so I know, okay, there's gonna be some type of crevice there. So I'm just gonna kind of pull that paint around, not in any straight line, because nature doesn't have a lot of perfectly straight lines. Now the other thing to take note of while you're painting this is where is your sunlight coming from, right? That's probably where the lighting, lighting of this picture is gonna come from. So in my picture, there's no clear sun and there are a lot of clouds. So maybe the light is coming from behind the mountain and this is all kind of dark. But let's say, uh, let's say the sun is probably more or over towards this side. So I'm gonna make maybe this side of the painting a little bit uh, lighter and this side a little bit darker. It'll uh, help us kind of just plan out how heavily to, to coat these lines. So I can go pretty dark over here.
again, make sure you finish the lines you're on before coming back to them. Unlike watercolor, this is going to be very set once uh, you finish brushing that area and it dries, the ink really locks in. So we do want to kind of finish one area at a time when we're doing this. Now here you can see I'm just kind of making sideways lines. They're not really connecting to anything. They're just kind of showing again that contour and crevices in the side of the mountain. Here I'm pulling to the right, again, because we said the light is going to be coming from the left. So I'll just kind of emphasize the shadows on the right side a little bit more. Let's look at that shadows on both sides. And as you can see here, once I hit those trees, those are kind of like big blobs of, of ink, so they will get very dark. So I want to try, whenever I'm making my trees, pull downwards to get those shapes. Just a lot of little zigzags. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. Just whatever you feel this side of this mountain is going to look like in terms of the shapes of these lines. But we can see here it's already looking pretty neat. It kind of does look like the sun is coming in from this side of the light. It's coming in from that side rather. And uh, get this real sense of this powerful mountain. I do want to at least tap each of my trees because I don't want any really strong, specific tree line to be there. They should just kind of look like little little blobs in the background. Just like if you look at an actual mountain, you're not gonna be able to see the details of any one tree. So don't worry too much if they get blurred out. And pulling down. You can always go back and add more ink, but it's gonna be difficult change uh, the ink that you've brushed. So we're just finishing each part as we go along. That's looking pretty nice. Let's do some of these rocks here. I'm going to leave my buildings for last because they're going to take some real fine detail. So here I'm going to come down with these trees here. This is going to get real dark. So I'm just going to kind of spotting water here because it's so much, so much ink. And then I'm going to use that extra water ink to start coloring in my rocks here. And again, I'm starting to color more on the right side. Sorry, uh, yes, the right side because I want my sun coming from the left. So I'm leaving my left side a little lighter. And I'll do that on all of these rocks. If I need some ink, I can see a little bit more there because I have a lot of ink on it. That's looking pretty neat. We can add a couple little lines here just to show that it's not all perfectly smooth on the front. And I don't want to touch my water lines yet. We'll do all our water together as once too. So again, each, each one of these, what I'm doing is I'm starting on the right side, trying to get that nice and dark and then adding just a little bit of detail on the left just to show that it's not perfectly smooth. Going back to my next rack. Starting with the right side. Just pulling in the ink from the edge of that line. I'm using the words ink and paint interchangeably here. Just painting with it, wherever our pigment is. All right. And our rocks, and let's not forget our rock up here, right? For our little bridge. Those are looking nice. Let's take a moment now and do our water. For our water, 
Uh, we do want to try and draw our lines uh, back and forth as much as possible because that'll show the ripples in the waves. With these ones, we're going to try not to let it paint too much of one dark blot of ink. So we're going to make these little quick motions with our brush side to side, same direction as the paper, and that's really going to help us show these look like waves. We want small little lines right around the rocks and larger lines as they get farther away because they're going to create these little little rippling waves just like here when you're touching your finger right near the rock or whatever's touching the water is going to be a ripple. As it gets further away they're going to get larger and larger. Now here in the background, we do have some uh, space near our horizon line. I don't want to really draw any waves specifically there because they're going to be so far away that I'm not really going to see them. But you can just touch the bottom of your horizon line with some paint, uh, sorry, water to bring that pigment down. And that will show that we do have water there that it's not part of the sky. If we just show that line's a little bit darker. I'm not going to put any waves because again, this is a calm, calmer day and it's very far away. So that's looking nice. So before we start on our uh, buildings, I'm going to give everyone a moment and uh, before we do any trees either, uh, let's just leave all that kind of inner detailed part. Uh, take your time, make sure you're happy with your mountain and your rocks. Uh, let's not add too many more layers of ink yet, we can get back to those, but for now we'll just take these layers that we have and try to make interesting uh, patterns and shapes out of them. Uh, give that a try and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Thank you. All right, we're back. So hopefully we have all our rock face for our mountain looking the way we like. And now we're gonna start going in and working on these buildings. Now the buildings can have quite a bit of dark uh, colors in them. We're not really sure what the actual coloring of the building is. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, but again, I'm gonna start the same type of approach or technique where I want to make the, um, the uh, right side of the building much darker uh, to show that that's where the shadows are going to be. And then for these stairs, I'm just going to make some little horizontal lines to start. And then I'm going to fill in the right side so we can see the shadow on the staircase. All right. I'm setting a little more horizontal so we can see that. That looks pretty nice. And then here, when we get to parts where there's a roof, we might want the roof to cast a little shadow, so I'll make, make that a little bit darker too. And then my trees. I do have a paper towel here. If you do need to dab your brush because it's a little too wet, that can be helpful. And I'm gonna fill in a little bit of this area between these trees, just to kind of give it a sense that it's just one forest there's a lot of shadows, a lot of shapes, but it's hard to make any particular one out in particular. We're just going to kind of draw these large blobby shapes of darkness with that sense of a neat, intricate little forest. I mean, this is why we don't worry too much about drawing our trees perfectly because they just become these interesting little uh, silhouette kind of blob shapes of darkness don't need to worry about what they look like. Just that they have a nice little contrast to our vision here. All right, there we go. And so for our building, let's do the same technique again. We're gonna fill in the long side here with some dark shadows, especially right under the roof. I'm gonna make this side of the building look very dark. I'm not going to paint this entryway yet. Maybe I'll add some extra black there and make it very dark so it looks like it's open. So if I did want to change the direction or angle of this building, all I have to do now is pull that ink 
here I'm going to pull up and here I'm going to pull down. We can add some little details and swirls here. I'm not doing anything in particular, I'm just adding little patterns and brush strokes where I can, just to give it a sense of complexity, but there's no real specific pattern there, just little dots and dashes. You can just kind of experiment and see what you enjoy doing with it, but I am going to come back to this and add a little more black, so that's going to be where some of our detail is. But that's where I want to start, just to kind of chip away these little white dots and highlights there. Uh, same for over here with this roof. Let's see, part here is going to be very dark. And these pillars might be pretty dark. This area might be facing away from the light. We're not really sure. Let's fill that in a little bit. And then some straight lines across here. This whole area is facing away from the sun, so the whole area is going to be a little darker. For this roof, again, it's going to be quite dark. But if you want to add your uh, little curves for these little shingles, I'm just going to paint in this type of stroke here. And that's going to add a little, just going to keep a couple of them. We don't need them all to show, just a couple of them here and there for definition. straight line for the bottom. There we are. And then over here, this platform, that's definitely going to be quite dark. Especially because this building is going to cast a shadow. Now we're starting to have all these, all these pieces and shadows coming together in a very detailed way. And the last thing I'm going to do here before we go back for another pass is I'm going to look at these clouds. So for the clouds, just like we did our water, and you can see over here, we want to start with the edge and just kind of go sideways back and forth on the edges of our clouds. sense that uh, making those circular rings around this mountain, this dramatic scene. You want to use a fair amount of water while doing this, just let it flow. Again, these are clouds, they're going to be a little, a little fluffy. So there's no particular hard lines that should necessarily be in them. That's looking great. So I'll give you time to add any other um, water you want to your buildings. And then once you're happy with that, we'll do one last pass. So go ahead, film these lines or your clouds and water any way you like. So what I'm going to do now is make that second pass I was mentioning. I'm going to have my flare pen back out. Again, I know it's a flare pen because it's got the cross at the top. Don't jump in your picture until you're sure you got the right pen because it's very hard to remove other ink. And here I'm going to go in and these really dark parts uh, like here in this tunnel, and now I'm going to make these lines. And again, the reason I waited for the end is because if I was trying to paint early on and I had all this ink there and it touched it accidentally, it would trickle and run down and be very, very hard to manage. So I'm going to fill in these doorways that I was working before on before with um, black and these two windows here. You can add a little bit um, in this house up at the corner. Just a little bit here because it's a little darker. 
and anywhere else you want to add some little uh, extra dark spots. If you want, for example, your mountain to have a little more contrast, you can add some little bits of black where you want some, but don't go too hard with it. You don't want it to become uh, too strong, but I'm going to add some in little crevices here. So we'll just make them a little bit darker. And then maybe I'll put um, one line here just to show a little more detail here. And then I want this building here to be a little dark, so I'm just going to add a little black on my picture here. Make this building nice and dark. So I'm just adding this black just in these little key areas that I think should look nice and dark. And if I step back and I say to myself, here, there's a little bit of a diagonal of these clouds. I want them more straight. I'm going to add just another cloud or two here to help straighten that effect out and make it a little more balanced. However we want to balance those, that's fine. I think that looks pretty nice. So that's what I'm just doing here. Going back, anything else that I just want to balance out, I'm going to put a little more ink on top of, and that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to put my pen away, take back out my brush. And I'm going to start with these lighter areas first. Get a little more of this cloud here. Put these other balancing clouds on this side. There we go. And put on these little dark spots here that I just put on. See, it's quite dark. That's a pretty neat effect. It's very strong. And then we're just going to finish in here. I'm just adding some, some black here just because this is where the sun can't reach. So with some really interesting dark areas here. I'm leaving that for last just because it's going to be so much ink. I don't want to accidentally bring it onto anywhere else. But I can use that. Maybe I'll use a little bit of over here. All right. So there's our mountain and our buildings. Uh, if you do want to have a little less ink, if you feel you've put on too much, wash off your brush and just pick up some of the ink. You can just lift it right off with the brush here. You can see, touch it onto a uh, piece of uh, paper towel and you can lift off any extra ink that you don't want. Let's do it before it dries, because once it dries, it's going to be there. All right, thank you very much. I hope you had a great time and had an enjoyable time painting your picture. If you do want to add something like watercolors or something else to color it, you can do that. Wait till it's completely dry. And remember any lines that you have not gone over yet, such as these lines, I had never painted these. These will still become active if I put water on them, but any of these other parts that I've already painted or put water on uh, will be set so you can color on top of it and you can add uh, those that light pigmented color type of uh, style. But I think they look great in black and white. So I hope you enjoy your picture and we hope to see you in class. Thank you very much.